ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marfo and my account of the Strength of Fallen tournament, which was a fantastic event put on in Woking, which I came to believe might be twinned with Mount Vesuvius or the Mouth of Hell. It was seriously hot in this room, and I'm totally going to blame any and all mistakes I make on that. So let's see what we've got here. This is game one, taking place on what seems to be a submerged football pitch during a drought. And as fate would have it, I'm facing off against the guy who beat me in the last round of the first, uh, well, the last tournament I went to. The Mighty Henners. And I am well up for a rematch. So we've got the Carrion Emissary with McMorning's Conflux. A performer, a Chihuahua, another performer, Sebastian with those in our R's. A nurse, Rafkin, and McMorning with plastic surgery, decaying aura, and moonlighting. And we're huddled heroically behind this building because I don't want to have the crap shot out of me uh, by a bandito, a Frycore Trapper that looks like a Ronin, Parker Barrows, with Stick Up, Hail of Bullets and Coordinated Heist, Doc Mitchell, Ashes and Dust with Scout the Field, and another bandito. My plan is to mob the centre and outmuscle my opponent, score, dig their graves, generate lots of dogs, and basically go for strategy denial and not care too much if he's running schemes around the flanks. Didn't really know what else to do, so I took leave your mark. The idea of being uh, that uh, the emissary can go off and, and score that, possibly, or hopefully I'll get some canine remains which can, can then ping off from the central huddle, a huddle and uh, go do that. In retrospect, given that Parker wants to hang back from the, from the fight, but not too far, and the uh, number of minions I anticipate having, I probably should have taken tail him. And I should say I've changed my normal crew to include two performers with the idea of denying claim jump and dig their graves from my enemy and helping me pull stuff into the uh, the bubble of hate. Let's see how we do. Turn one, there's my hand. And to be honest, guys, I'm not taking very many pictures. My phone is dying in the heat. I'm dying in the heat. And it's hard enough to remember uh, every move of these games in perfect detail as it is. So bear with me. This is the only picture I've got of the first turn, right at the end. Basically, I got my carrion emissary out early to put up these shards here to block line of sight from his sniper, who's on a height for piece of terrain. I did get pick of deployment zone, but I can I was sat on this side of the table and I couldn't be bothered to change, so we're just gonna have to try to play around that. But yeah, so most of my crew has gone off over this side, hiding behind the uh, cover this provides. The outcasts have shifted around onto the, this decking, and uh, the, the bulk of our crews are both looking at each other across this uh, square. Ashes and Dust and a, uh, the Bandito have come out over this side. Uh, Ashes and Dust is just over here somewhere. And that's putting a lot of pressure on my right flank. As a penultimate activation, I put my Performer up around here, with the idea that McMorning can um, use his injection to push her forwards and drop a nice scheme marker in the middle for a nice easy dig their graves next turn, but unfortunately Parker is pushed forwards, he then puts some heavy damage on the performer, she's hanging on by a thread and um, sticks up these, uh, what are they called, hazardous bullet storms right in front of her, which was a real pain. So Ashes and Dust being over here on my right, I'm really not keen on McMorning tangling with that thing. He could take it down, but it's effort because it's immune to poison and his talents are better used elsewhere, I feel. He's, uh, he's got a ton of poison on him from the nurse, but unfortunately I've moved Sebastian away so I can't uh, I can't get the catalyst push. It was a bit of a pain, so what I do is I walk him around over here to this side of the building. Injection Rafkin to a better charge lane down that central line, and then walk him again and again over to here, so I completely switch the side. Oh, and I get my poison push at the end of the turn, so that's how I get all the way over here. And I really like that move. So we go into turn two, I've held on to my 13 and my six of crows, ready for some dog summoning. And I think this is how things look at the end of the turn. I got the initiative, decided to go with McMorning, charged the uh, bandito, I think I severed and killed it in one. Wanted to try to make a flesh construct out of it, but I think he had the trigger that meant he was going to push away. So I decided just to strip his models down, start building momentum, and then score points later. So I used the Doctor's last AP just to hop back over the fence. Probably should have made sure I was in cover, but never mind. And then I think I injectioned the minus zombie I'd got from my shards up to drop a ski marker over here. The rest of my team kind of clusters up around here. 
most of them just dipping their toes uh, within six inches of the center. A Wuka Raider comes out. Can't remember what it did in terms of damage, but I think we damage it uh, to like half its wounds or something. Sebastian's got me a dog from uh, the zombie who's come to stand in base contact with it. Just lower its defense because that uh, no cheating ability of it is uh, really, really good. Although it's not helping it against the emissary. Ashes has eaten my performer, which was sad, but uh, I got some use out of her before, we, before she went down. I put these shards up in front of her just to prevent a direct charge, so he had to spend time coming around the side to get to her. And that's my tactic, is just to hold this thing off as long as I can. I don't think his shooting is too effective this turn, and it looks like Doc Mitchell has really run forwards hard for the centre. His banditos run all the way down to into the corner, where I'm never going to get it, and drop scheme marker. And so at the end of the turn, he scores Leafy Mark, and we both score Turf War. We go to turn three, I don't have a picture of my hand. I get the initiative, and the emissary goes, looking to finish off the Wukar Raider, Raider and score me some uh, Dig Their Graves points. He's a minus one defense, I've got a good hand, and his fate is assured until I Black Joker the final damage flip, and the Wukar survives which is absolutely terrible because Parker can now come forwards and shoot into the combat. I think he pops Oathkeeper this turn and he's got some kind of um, upgrade that allows him to hit every single person in the uh, in the engagement, which is virtually my entire crew. So he does no damage to the Wukar Raider, he kills... who does he kill? Kills my Chihuahua, don't know if he damages my dog, Put some damage on Rafkin, put some damage on, you know, pretty much everybody, and um, I think his next shot picks off the nurse, and that was quite generally horrendous. So by the end of the turn, things look like this. When I activated the emissary, I closed the door um, with the shards to stop Ashes and Dust getting in, so he's had to go the long way around, escape the zombies' um, engagement, and get in on my guys here in the centre. And god, I hate the fact that this thing can't take poison conditions. I'm really, really missing the uh, the effigy. I should learn to use that thing. So we do kill the Wukar Raider and score Dig Their Graves. I get some more dogs out with Sebastian. We drop some more scheme markers in the centre. McMorning's not having a great time up here. Uh, he's been tailed and clearly hasn't done enough damage to waste that uh, Ronin. But he has managed to injection a... K9 remains up here into uh, range to score uh, Leave Your Mark. So both Resurrectionists and Outcasts score that this turn, and we both score for the centre. And when the Outcasts get Talem. And unfortunately we do make a bit of a mistake here. My opponent thought that the spotted condition for Talem is only uh, removed if you get out of line of sight at the end of your activation. I thought it was removed as well when, uh, when you score from it. But in the heat of the moment I lose my ability to read and can't find the sentence to support my claim on his rule card, and so we play it that uh, McWarning has still got the spotted condition for the rest of the game. This was a mistake and totally my fault, because my opponent gave me every opportunity to check the rule. So we go into turn 4, good hand, terrible photo, and this is how the game or the board looks just after we finish the game. I was too slow taking the picture, my opponent seems to have uh, cleared up his models already. But basically, Ashes and Dust killed most of the people in my centre, apart from Sebastian, who managed to survive, probably, I think, being defensive. Summoned loads of dogs, uh, such that I've run out of dogs' models. Not realising we were still counting the Doctor as being tailed, I decided to... I think I must have killed the Doctor with an expunge um, to get my flesh construct and not run off behind this building. And uh, we end the game with both of us having models uh, enough to score for Turf War, both of us getting markers down for Leave Your Mark, and at the end of the game the Outcast scored three points for Turf War, three points for Leave Your Mark, and three points for Talon, which I reckon the Ronin would probably be, probably have put back on McMorney every turn anyway, if we'd realised. Whilst the Resurrectionist scored three points for Turf War, two points for Dig Their Graves, and two points for Leave Your Mark, making this game 9-7 to the Outcasts. Really fun game, I really enjoy playing Henners, absolutely top guy, and I can't wait the t until we get the chance to play each other again. So yeah, sorry about the pictures, sorry about the rules mistake, but it's a tournament, it's hot, what can you do? We both had a great time, and that's all I'm looking for, so I hope you enjoyed this, take care. Yeah. <laughs>